I did it this, not did I talked to this girl one time, and uh, she said she had a boyfriend who was overseas, and I know she probably meant that like he was studying abroad or serving in the military, but what I like to think is that he was just completely jaded by the second largest type of body of water. <laughs> no longer fascinates him. <laughs> um, I don't know who's in charge of naming stuff in the clothing industry, but I think they need to like get more consistent and figure it out, because... Just tell me if you can see the problem here. Okay. Mink scarf, all right? Alligator boots. Baby pajamas. <laughs> Horrifying, right? Um, um, so, have you ever done something so stupid that you're embarrassed and there's nobody else around that even knows it happened? Um, I have. I was going through a drive through at this restaurant, I'm not going to say which one, but it rhymes with Murder King. And uh, I placed my order and the lady said, can you repeat that? I couldn't hear you. So I took off my sunglasses and said it again at the exact same volume, which turns out doesn't help. Um, so I did the next step, which any of us would do, and just drove away hungry. Um, I was reading the newspaper the other day and I saw this headline and it said, Man dies after being rescued from freezing pond. And my first thought was, can you really call that a rescue? And <laughs> my second thought was, maybe they should have left him in there. Sounds like things went south after they pulled him out of the water. You know, I'm not a doctor, but it's, it's whatever. Um, I guess I owe an apology to the American Southwest, because I didn't realize that I was the only one who could prevent forest fires. Um, <laughs> I've been in Ohio my entire life. Like, I didn't know I was supposed to be out there stopping this from getting out of control. And, but it's kind of their fault, too, because the way they told me didn't make any sense. Like, they could have called me or sent a letter, but instead, they put a commercial on TV and just hoped that I would see it. And, you know, luckily I did, so I guess I should probably not be here. Um, my sister's husband got her a subscription to satellite radio, and so I was in the car with her the other day, she said, what do you want to hear? We can listen to anything. I said, how about a comedy station? <coughs> well, I like comedy. And uh, she said, oh, we can't listen to comedy. This is serious satellite radio. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my brother got me a reversible belt for Christmas, which is good because I was having a lot of trouble with my pants falling up after I took them off. <laughs> uh, when I was in high school, I wrestled, which is surprising because I'm not athletic at all. But um, so now when I'm like on winter breaks, I go home and I help coach the youth wrestling team. And it's any kid, they can't be older than sixth grade, but they have to be old enough so that they know that they don't want to be there. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm pretty patient with the kids, but some of my friends that help coach aren't. So like I practice one day and I hear my friend go, listen, Leo, douchebag, you gotta pay attention to what I'm trying to teach you. And I went over to him, I was like, Chris, his name's Chris, too. I didn't call him my name. <laughs> Why the hell would I do that? I didn't, so stop it. Um, I was like, Chris, you got to realize, like, these are young kids. If you call them douchebag, they don't know what that means. You got to use insults that actually hurt their feelings. All right, thanks, guys. Woo! <laughs>